an E.B. White film. Hopefully it's a more faithful adaptation than Stuart Little. Uh, I believe the term is writing books. In collaboration with Martin Luther and Robert Evans. Ready, you gotta read all 95 of these theses. This man is an author. This Barbie is J.D. Salinger. He has just finished writing a story. He thinks many people will like to read it. The naive fool. So he must have the story made into a book. He simply must. Let's see how the book is made. First he clicks export to Kindle. The story goes to the printing shop. This workman is a typesetter. He's just one he of an infinite number of monkeys. The story so it can be printed. He types the story on this machine, letter by letter. And the machine keeps thinking he meant to write Every ducking. Every time the typesetter touches a key, a mold for a letter slides into this box. Moldy letters, we gotta get this place treated. Many molds together make a line. No, a line segment. Every time the lever goes up, an angel gets its wings. pours over the letter molds inside the machine. Why don't we see all this in Stephen J. Cannell's logo? When the metal cools off, it hardens and makes a line of words. Careful, you're going to make Eliza Doolittle sick. It takes many lines like this to make a page. Which is why I always double space at Arial Size 14. So far my teacher hasn't dinged me for it. works on new lines, a man takes the finished lines over to a long table. We're knights of the long table, our lines are formidable. Here he arranges the lines for each page. Now these don't have to go in any specific order, do they? This page is to have a picture. Oh, they're doing the novelization of Birds of Prey. Damn it, E.B. It takes up the space of many lines. Well, sure, the exchange rate of words to pictures is like a thousand. The composer then goes to the next page. Wondering how his degree in music theory the led him word. here. The composer marks the end of each page. When many pages like this are ready, a workman takes them to another part of the printing shop. The incinerator. Then this workman takes the lines of type for many pages and Theodore Roosevelt? Metal frame. He must be careful not to mix them up. If they go in the wrong order, the book will be incoherent nonsense and we'll have to credit it to Glenn Beck. Long and short pieces of metal keep the pages apart. But medium pieces of metal have no worthwhile function. This key locks the lines and pictures tightly in the frame. So Madame Leota will send you to a crypt to get it because Goofy lost he it before the parade. All sides. Then he evens all the lines so that none of them will stick up. This job used to be done by Pete Best. Then all is locked still tighter so that the lines and pages won't come apart. Then they squeeze it just a little more, just for fun. The pages like it that way. But the words and lines of type are of soft metal. Mithril! They would soon wear out in printing. In this shop, they are made into copper. Copper is hard. Dying is easy. Let's watch how this is done. This operator covers the lines and pages with a plate of wax. Then he pushes it into the press. While pushing himself into depression. Down goes the press. And out comes the wax plate, with all the pictures and letters pressed into the soft wax. How many times a day did these employees silently curse the name of Johann Gutenberg? Been holding on that for a while. Are we supposed to read it all? Next, another worker dips the wax plate into a large tank which has copper in it. Copper tank is my favorite copper sunblock. goes into all the places where the letters have pressed into the wax. It forms a solid plate. Not exceptional, just it has solid. The same letters and same pictures as before, but it is much stronger. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. Many books can be printed from copper plates. But some only from iron bowls. Now the plates are cut apart. This sharp saw easily cuts through the hard copper. And the employee's thumb. Each of these small plates has the words and pictures for just one page of the book. But it's a page of Atlas Shrugged, so hopefully it'll get broken before it can go to press. Next, the plates go over to the printing press. Here, this workman makes the plates ready for printing on this press. That is why they call him the Ready Man. 
Well, he's trying to get everyone to call him that anyway. The space where you see him now is called the press bed. Looks more comfortable than any bed at a travel lodge. 64 pages fit on one bed. One fell off and bumped his head. The ready man fits every plate tightly to the bed in the right order. Wait, you wanted this in the right order? I thought this book was on shuffle. There are two beds on this press, one for each side of the paper. Uh, they're really trying to both sides this paper. Both press beds of this printing press must be filled with plates before the printing can begin. Now, one push of a button and the big press starts. Wait, no, it's gonna overheat the machine that keeps the, the Metropolis T-Rex frozen. Drums. Rollers spread the ink evenly over the plates. First, one side of the paper is pressed to one set of plates, then the other side of the paper to the other set. Did you need that part explained? Sheet after sheet. The printed pages begin to pile up at one end of the press. And we keep saying we'll get to the pile-up, but you know, weeks go by, suddenly we're out of clean sheets. This workman now examines the sheets to see if they are nicely and clearly printed. He's got to speed read the entire thing in about three seconds. Good luck. Eh, crap. How do I fold one of these again? Now let's see what happens to these sheets after they're printed. Oh, may we? Here in the bookbinding plant, they first come to the folding machine. Each large printed sheet will be folded until it reaches the size of a single page. And we want all the pages in this book to be the same size? And the machine goes on, folding and folding. Contemplating the futility the of life. Have been folded. You can't hear it because this was shot MOS, but while the machines work, they're actually dropping some sick beats. This man checks the folders to make sure that the pages follow each other in the right order. Let's see, one, three, five, screw it, that's enough for me. Then all the folders are taken to another part of the bindery. This part is called the gathering room. It's where we hold parties. These girls stack the folders in piles and put each pile into its proper bin. Piles is women's business, everyone knows that. To it that there are always folders in every bin. This thing can kick ten the sheets every second. The folders in the right order from the first page to the last page of the book. It can also flip enough pancakes to feed a megachurch. One by one, the machine gathers all the folders for one book. At the end of this long machine, the folders are coming out. All the pages for the book. All this effort for a menu at Cheesecake Factory. Here, other girls take the assembled folders to other machines. Ah, the mythical other girls that every main character is not like. Here, a machine sews them together. That's a human, not a machine. Again, each folder goes into the machine separately. This machine sews the folders together with strong thread. The sewing will keep the pages from coming apart. Emotionally, the thread is a licensed therapist. After the books have been sewed, they go on to the trimming shop. Where superfluous subplots go to the cutting room floor. This machine trims the pages to just the right size with three sharp knives. Three sharp knives, knife see how they cut. Of the book. Then, with two knives for the two short sides. Man, Rubik's Cubes used to be dangerous. Now the pages ride a train. But the books are not yet finished. They still need covers. Like Johnny Cash doing Hurt. Long book covers are made from paperboard. First, the paperboard is cut just the right size. They're all personally assessed by Goldilocks. I can't wait to see Killian Murphy in Nolan's biopic of this guy. Next, cloth from this roll is glued over the paperboard. This makes covers that are strong and good looking. What about covers that are frail and dorky? I need my representation. At last, the name of the book is stamped on the cover 
in shining gold letters. And Ready Player 3 is off to stores. Community now, theater the Stanley Kowalski is on the scene. The to be put inside them. All right, I'm off to get my t-shirt tightened. One push, and the book has a cover around it. One push, One push makes you print. The cover is glued tight. And all of these books will be systematically destroyed by Mr. Bean. Here they go, all finished and ready for shipping to all parts of the world. The story has been made into a book for readers everywhere. But the author has already spent his entire advance and it never went to second printing, so he's still working the graveyard shift at Del Taco. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.